Hi guys, Jamie Humphreys here for Six String Alliance and today we're taking a look at a lick in the style of guitar legend Richie Kotzen. <laughs> Richie Kotzen started out as a Shrapnel Records recording artist in the late 80s. And for those of you that have never come across the Shrapnel label, Shrapnel was a huge phenomena during the 1980s. This really is my period of guitar when I was growing up. It was run by Mike Varney, who started the Spotlight column in, I believe it was Guitar World, Guitar World or Guitar Player, one of the two. And a lot of guitarists such as Paul Gilbert, Ingve Malmsteen, uh, Marty Friedman, Jason Becker, Michael Lee Ferkins, Vinnie Moore, Greg Howe, and Richie Kotzen had started their career recording albums for Mike Varney's Shrapnel label. Richie released his self-titled debut album in 1989 for Shrapnel Records, and that's when I first discovered him. That was a fantastic album, and that album was produced by Jason Becker, and Richie himself said he learned a lot about playing guitar working alongside Jason. Richie released his second album Fever Dream in 1990 and this is when we first see Richie take into the mic. This was his first vocal album and uh, was a fantastic crossover of the shred guitar that we saw of the original uh, self-titled album but with these great songs and Richie showcasing these amazing vocal skills. The track Dream of a New Day actually appeared on the Bill and Ted Bogus Journey soundtrack. Richie's final album out of that original trio was called Electric Joy, and this album had a profound effect on me and remains one of my most favorite instrumental albums of all time. The, the, it was a real change in direction in both the tone, guitar style, and composition. It had a much more of a traditional blue sound to it and was had a much cleaner tone, although Richie still demonstrated those guitar pyrotechnics with the rolling pentatonic technique and his signature sweet picking style. Now that album really inspired me. On the front cover we see a young Richie brandishing this uh, awesome looking Ibanez Telecaster and it was at this point that he started to move more towards that Fender guitar sound that we associate with him today, although he didn't actually record the album with that Ibanez Telecaster. Richie was actually in the throes of negotiating a solo record deal, I think it was with Interscope, when he was asked to join the highly successful rock band Poison. But uh, this album came out in the early 90s when obviously there was a huge shift in music towards the grunge scene, but still it was without a doubt the best album that Poison had ever recorded. You know, Richie was featured heavily as a vocalist on it. You can really hear his songwriting influence in the tracks. The guitar sound is absolutely incredible. And there was some jaw dropping guitar solos on there. And it was at that point, Richie swapped over to Fender guitars playing the original custom shop guitar that was built for him that would later become his signature guitar, which inspired this guitar that I'm playing now that I've had since 1993. 1994 saw the release of Richie's first post Poison album and was entitled Mother's Head Family Reunion. And it was produced by the legendary Richie Zito. This album is an incredible album. I bought it on the day it came out. And once again, it influenced me in so many ways. It had a real mixture of soul, blues, and rock. Richie's absolutely on fire on this record, both for his songwriting, his vocal skills, and also the guitar playing. For me, the, 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 the track Cover Me features one of the greatest guitar solos ever recorded. That outro solo is, is just absolutely genius. Richie also released Intergalactic Fusion Experience, which was recorded with Greg Bissonette on drums and Jeff Berlin on bass. He also teamed up with another 
great guitar player, another great shrapnel artist, Greg Howe, and they recorded two albums, Tilt and Project, under the Cots and Howe banner. Richie also recorded with Glenn Hughes and joined the band Virtue with bass legend Stanley Clark and Lenny White on drums. Richie also enjoyed a successful period with the rock band Mr. Big, replacing the original guitarist Paul Gilbert. And this was in the late 90s. He released two studio albums with Mr. Big, Get Over It and Actual Size. And there's also a fantastic live album and DVD of a concert that they played in Japan. In more recent times, Richie has fronted the highly successful supergroup Winery Dogs with ex-Dream Theatre drummer Mike Portnoy and bass legend and fellow Mr. Big uh, band member Billy Sheehan. Richie's been involved in several compilation albums, lots of the LA Blues Authority albums. Uh, he even at one point was said to uh, have uh, been considered for the job with Ozzy Osbourne. Over the years, Richie has had a very successful solo career with an impressive output of material. Not only does he play guitar on these albums, he plays keyboards, he plays drums, he plays bass, he sings, and he produces all of the albums himself. So, uh, you know, he's a real musical force. 2021 has seen Richie release new music for a new project with Adrian Smith of Iron Maiden. So we're really looking forward to uh, seeing what the rest of 2021 brings for Richie with this new project. When it comes to equipment, Richie's used a wide range of guitars over the years, starting out playing Yamaha SGs and then moving over to Ibanez. He was an Ibanez artist for a long while using the uh, RG style guitars with the uh, the kind of scary uh, horror movie uh, characters sprayed on. Uh, you can see one of those guitars on his Rock Chops video, uh, instructional video that was released in the early 90s. He then continued with Ibanez. As I said, they were making the Ibanez telecasters for him. And then he moved over to Starfield. Now, I don't know whether Starfield was part of Ibanez, but uh, it was definitely some kind of involvement there. And Richie was playing these really beautiful looking Starfield telecasters in the early 90s before he moved over to Fender. Richie has had a long association with Fender guitars and has a signature Telecaster, which is based on the original Telecaster that was built for him when he was in Poison, as well as a signature Strat. Amplification, Richie has used Marshall amplifiers, he's used Yamaha amplifiers, he's used Mesa Boogie. Uh, during the late 90s, early 2000s, he became involved with the Cornford Company, and uh, uh, I'm kind of proud of that because I actually set that up. I set that meeting up. I met Richie in 1999. I interviewed him for Guitar Techniques magazine when he was in London. I think he was playing at the Barbican Centre doing the, the gig with Stanley Clark. I went up and did an interview with him and uh, we stayed in touch and we became friends. And uh, it was around that time that I started to use the Cornford Amps. And I suggested to Richie that he really should check these amps out. So Paul Cornford sent an MK50 over to America and Richie loved it. And uh, one thing led to another and uh, they started to develop the signature Richie Cotson head. Um, so I was lucky enough to have been involved in that quite early on going into Cornford when Richie was there and testing out the prototypes. And uh, Richie and I did a lot of gigs together. It was a really productive time uh, uh, for music and for guitar for me, uh, doing gigs with Richie, uh, Dave Kilminster and uh, Guthrie Govan. The, the four of us used to go out and do these shows for Cornford. So uh, a lot of history there, a lot of good times. More recently, Richie has become involved with Victory Amps, which is in fact Martin Kidd, who designed the original Cornford Amps. And he now has his own signature Victory head available. So let's just talk a little bit about the gear I'm using today before we look at the lick. Uh, I'm using a Fender Telecaster. This is an incredibly important guitar for me for a number of reasons. Um, I was playing Ibanez guitars in the late 80s and early 90s. I played um, a 540 Power that I still have out there. I got that in 1988. And then in 89, 90, I got, I got a 
floral Steve Vai model. And uh, I, I love that guitar. And uh, then I heard Electric Joy by Richie Kotzen. And then I heard Native Tongue and was like, I want that guitar sound. And this guitar had just come out, which was a Jerry Donahue signature model. There were two signature models that he had out, which was the Japanese model, which this is, and the custom shop model. And I went into a guitar shop with my Ibanez Steve Vai model and I traded it for this, which in hindsight was a slightly foolish thing to do because that gem is worth a fortune now had I have kept it. But on the other hand, it really shaped the way I played guitar. Uh, I was teaching guitar in a uh, local music store and I had a Damasio catalog and it said it was pictures of Richie in there and it said that he used the fast track T pickup so when I got this guitar I re had the bridge replaced for a six saddle bridge I had the fast track T fitted I had the radius taken out of the fingerboard and I had jumbo frets fitted and I even had a 20 second fret squeezed on it's a little bit wonky but it it still works so this was my tribute to the Richie Kotzen model that he was playing with Poison long before the Kotzen guitar was available so we cut to the mid 2000s and uh, Richie's over doing some work with us we're doing some shows together for Cornford and uh, he comes to my house and uh, I asked him if he would play a solo on my album I've got an album out if you head on over to jamiehumphreys.com you can find the album in the music section but there's a track in particular which is called Fubar where Richie plays a guest solo on it and uh, he used this guitar which was kind of cool as this was the guitar that was really inspired by him when he was in uh, in, in Poison and also that early Electric Joy album. So it kind of went full circle. He actually graffitied the back of it for me. I handed him a Sharpie and stupidly I didn't get it lacquered and it's worn off. So at, at some point when I next see him, I'm going to get him to uh, re-graffiti it. But this guitar has had a real impact on me even today. I've been using Music Man guitars now since 1997 98 i signed a contract with them and uh, a couple of years ago they built me a guitar that i designed um uh, based on the axis and uh what was the bridge pickup it was it was this pickup because i just love the sound of this guitar and that tone that richie had back in the early 90s on that uh, on that poison album you know if you haven't heard it go and check out native tongue it's such a fantastic guitar sound choice of amps today i'm plugged into the rack but uh, i'm not using any effects i'm just using it for the wireless i'm going into the front of my mesa badlander rectifier i'm on channel one on the crunch mode and i'm going direct from the badlander into my uh, uad audio interface so i'm using the onboard cab clone ir and i'm using the mesa rectifier 2x12 closeback ir for effects i'm adding a little bit of ambience from the UAD Oceanway Reverb and there's a bit of delay courtesy of the TC Electronics 2290 DT plugin. So now let's take a look at the lick. Before we get started and you all start writing, Richie Cotson doesn't use a pick. I know Richie doesn't use a pick, but I've chosen to look at that period of his playing where he was still using a pick, namely so I could include some sweep picking. Uh, also, I use a pick and I dare say many of you use a pick. So I think it's kind of cool to be able to uh, include some of his style and his licks into your own playing. Plus, also, Richie was a big pick player, you know, with the sweet pick and also some of the hybrid picking stuff. So this lick is based around E minor and it uses the E minor pentatonic scale, the E blue scale and E Dorian mode, which is the second mode of D major. And it's using a hybrid picking technique. So we're going to start off with an E5 chord to give us our key center. Just so you can hear, uh, put the lick in reference of some harmony. And then this pattern is, uh, it, it takes us through every position of the E minor pentatonic. We start off on shape number two, and then we move all the way up the neck. So we start off by picking the third fret of the E and hammering onto the fifth fret. And then we roll our third finger over onto the fifth fret A, and with the second finger of our picking hand, so we're using some hybrid picking, we play the fifth fret of the A string. So you get this. And then you re-pick the fifth fret and pull off to the third fret and then we slide up to the fifth fret so you get this okay so now once we've changed position we hammer on to the seventh fret of the e string so you get this 
We then bar across and play the uh, seventh fret of the A. We're using, again, this hybrid picking technique. Whenever you're crossing the strings, use the hybrid picking technique. So. <laughs> So we've uh, slid up to five, hammer seven, play seven on the A string, then play uh, seven on the E, pull off to five, and then hammer back onto seven. So put that all together. <laughs> We then go on to the A string and we play 5, 7 on the A. And we play uh, 7 on the D. So we're rolling over with our third finger and using the second finger of our picking of our picking hand. And then we re-strike 7, pull off 5, hammer 5. So, so far we have this. And then we repeat that on the D and the G string. Okay, that time we finish off by sliding. So we play five to seven, pick and hammer. Roll our third finger over, use hybrid picking to play the uh, uh, seventh fret of the G. Repick seven on the uh, D string, pull off to five and then slide up to seven. Okay, so so far. And then we hammer on to nine on the D. And then we play the nine on the G. Again, we're rolling across. Repick nine and pull off to seven. So from nine on the D, we hammer to 12 on the D. And then we roll over onto the 12 on the G again using that hybrid picking. We replay 12 on the D, pull off to nine and slide up to 12. And then we hammer 14 on the D and play 14 on the G. Repick 14, pull off to 12 and then hammer on to 14. And then onto the G string and we repeat that. So now we're, we're playing Dorian because we play 14 on the B. So you get 12 to 14 on the G and then tw uh, 14 on the B and then 14, 12, 14 on the G. And then we onto the B string where we're playing 12 to 15 on the B and 15 on the top E and pull off uh, tw uh, 15 to 12 on the B. So I'm gonna play that section because then things start to change around a little bit here on the top string. So here's that first portion of the lick nice and slowly and hopefully clearly for you. <laughs> Okay, so then we're on, uh, we've pulled off from 15 to 12 on the B. We're now going to slide down to 10 on the B. Hammer 12 and play 12 on the top E and then pull off to from 12 to 10 on the B and then slide back up to 12. So you get this move. We slid back up to 12, we hammer 15 and then play 15 on the top E, back to 15 on the B, pull off to 12, slide up to 15, hammer 70, and roll over, play uh, 17 on the top E, and then pull off from um, 17 to 50, slide back down to 12, hammer 15, play 15 on the top E, pull off 15 to 12 on the B, and then slide back down to uh, 10 and hammer 15. And there we're uh, hammering across from 10 to 12 on the B, play 12 on the top E, back to 12 on the B, pull off to 10. So you get this. Okay, so let's now play the entire pentatonic section so far. Okay, at that point, when we pull off the last, uh, the 12 to 10, we then slide up 
to 11 on the B. And we have this uh, really cool blue scale uh, wide stretch legato lick where we're playing 11, 12 and 15 on the B. And then 10, 12 and 15 on the top E. And then we tap onto uh, 17 on the top E. And we pull off 15, 12, 10, hammer 12, hammer 15, and then tap 19. So you get this. And then we pull off again from um, uh, 15, 12, and 10, and then hammer uh, back to 12 and back to 15 again. So you're always kind of rolling, doing that little pattern on the top E string and just changing the position of the tap. So one more time. Okay, so then the final time we tap on the 17 and we slide it up to 15 and then we slide back down to 17. And then we have this little chromatic pattern. So that's from 10 up to 11 up to 12. Back down 11 to 10. And then we play 12 on the B, uh, 10 on the top E, and then 12, 11, 10 on the B. So, so you put that entire section together. Then we drop down to seven on the B string. So that's seven, eight, seven on the B, nine on the G, seven on the B, nine, seven, slide to six on the uh, G string. Now we have a descending B minor 11 arpeggio on the G string and then play seven and nine on the, uh, seven on the D and nine on the A. So it's like an F sharp minor uh, seventh arpeggio. We then play six on the G with the down pick and then an up pick on seven on the D, nine on the A, and we pull off to uh, five on the A. So this. And then we do a down pick on um, seven on the D string. And I do an up pick on nine on the A string, pull off to five. And then an up pick on seven on the, uh, on the E string. So you get this. We finish off with this sliding vibrato between three and five on the bottom E. We pull off to an open E, and then we have this sort of country-inspired bend where you're playing 15 on the top two strings and 14 on the G. And I put my first finger on 13 on the G to help bend up that G string. We then have an open sixth string. A minor seventh chord, so that's seven on the G, eight on the B. So E minor seventh, and then we conclude with an E5 chord. Okay, so let's put the lick together nice and slowly. Let's have a listen to it. So it's quite a fiddly lick, this one. It includes quite a few different techniques that are associated with Ritchie. I know I'm not 
just playing it purely finger style. Uh, I've got the pick, but that's because we've got some sweet picking. So we've got some rolling position shifting pentatonic licks. We've got some wide stretched legato blue scale licks with some tapping and sliding. And we've got some chromatic licks and we've got some cascading arpeggio ideas. So quite a lot for you to uh, get your teeth into. Now, if you've had trouble following this lesson, don't worry, you can head on over to the Six String Alliance website. Just click the link in the description where you can download the tab and the guitar profile for free. Okay, that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Keep the suggestions coming and stay tuned for more lessons here on the Six String Alliance YouTube channel. Bye for now.